thanks very much, Kylie. That's actually longer than my speech. So that's, uh, that's uh, thank you so much for those kind words. Well, good morning, and what a pleasure it is to be here at the Australian College of Nursing's National Forum at the Star City Casino to talk about change and how change can happen. Change, of course, in a casino setting may mean something entirely different. <clears throat> and if you have a close look at this photo, which I snapped last evening, you might actually recognise some of the ACN members studying the impact of change as it falls out of their poker machines. <laughs> I was going to say that that was Cathy Baker, third from the left, but Cathy's actually an apology today, so I can say that that's Cathy Baker, third from the left. <laughs> However, I have chosen to focus on change as an, as an inevitable consequence of life and the importance of knowing where you came from in order to know where you're going. I'll also describe some of the qualities necessary of a leader trying to bring about change. Now, I, okay. Change is inevitable unless it comes from a vending machine. And this one is in our tea room at work and it was notorious for not giving change to anyone on any occasion. And I have to personally say I lost a lot of money in that particular machine. Perhaps one of the greatest components of change was social reform of Florence Nightingale. I'd like to say that I think she said, change is scary, but not as scary as staying the same forever. <laughs> Remember, you cannot unsee what you've just seen. <laughs> so when I think about change, I'm reminded of the story of the Trappist monk who joined the ministry, I mean a monastery, and took a vow of silence, but was able to speak two words every 10 years. So the young monk, showing all the qualities of an emerging leader, motivation, positivity, responsibility, and trustworthiness, abided by his vow, and after 10 years was asked by the head of the monastery if he would like to say two words. The young monk displaying self-awareness, charisma, and recognising that there was a need for change within the monastery, simply said, bed hard. <laughs> now, he was not impulsive, and nor was he making a random attempt to say just anything. As an emerging leader, realising the importance of change, he chose his two words well. He knew about delivering the right message. So another 10 years went by, that's him, second from the left. And he was asked by the head of the monastery if he'd like to say another two words. Of course, with another 10 years' experience, the not-so-young monk had added to his change management skill set. The not-so-young monk had, abide, had added to his change management skill set and was a good listener, had developed a few entrepreneurial talents, was patient yet persistent, and was able to ask the challenging questions. So he simply said, food bad. <laughs> so another 10 years passed by, and again the now very old Trappist monk was asked about another two words. This time, the old monk, never expecting to see immediate results and knowing that change wouldn't happen overnight, and realising that change is a long and deliberate process that requires mental toughness, finally said, I quit. <laughs> to which the head of the monastery replied, well, I'm not surprised you've been complaining ever since you got here. <laughs> so the moral to that story about making change happen is that it's never easy. It takes time and effort. Thoughtful communication is the key. And while people make change happen, the life of a monk who sleeps on a hard bed, eats rotten food, and who takes a vow of silence, will always be up against it. The essence of change is getting from point A to point B. And the most difficult thing about change is discovering where point A actually is. It is, in fact, the realisation that something is not working or that something could work better. And if so, how then do we arrive at point B? I think of point A as where we came from, and point B as to where we're going, and that change won't happen if we, don't, if we don't appreciate this concept.
And so I have a few examples of change, some rapid and some a slower, more purposeful process, but all have resulted in change. Take, for example, student nurse Cherry Ames, the subject of 27 mystery novels written in the 1940s. Cherry started nursing school in 1941 at a hospital in Spencer, and she did so with a mixture of anxiety and anticipation, no doubt, as we all did. Would she have what it takes to be a nurse? She left her quiet town of Hilton, Illinois, from the bustle to, for the bustle of a hospital life to meet challenges she wouldn't have imagined. Yet not more than two years later, in 1943, Cherry becomes chief nurse. <laughs> Personally, it took me 36 years. <laughs> but some of us are just a bit slower than others. This is a photograph of my student nurse group. My PA asked me which one was me. And when I pointed myself out to her in the middle row, third from the, third from the right, I did say, but Michelle, <laughs> change can happen. So where are we now? Where is point B? In 2017, for Nurse Jackie, every day was a high wire, of high wire act of juggling patients, doctors, fellow nurses and her own indiscretions. Emergency room nurse Jackie Payton epitomised modern day healthcare. She does everything she can to provide her patients with the best care despite a crumbling health system dominated by indifferent doctors, penny-pinching bean counters and masses of bureaucratic red tape. Sound familiar? Now everyone knows that technology can drive change. Bringing in new technology will inevitably require a change to the way we work. Back when I trained, infection control was not near as advanced as it is today. And as responsible nurses, we had to resort to this type of equipment to protect ourselves from infection. No doubt this will bring back memories for some of the more mature attendees here today. The girls on the stage will recognise it for sure. <laughs> today, however, as demonstrated once again by Nurse Jackie, infection control is as simple as a pair of gloves and the judicious use of intravenous antibiotics as well as a few chosen words, such can be the case with Nurse Jackie's indiscretions. When I was talking to Kylie Ward about today's presentation, she suggested I tell a few stories about myself because they were not necessarily believable and not always the most orthodox way of bringing about change. I'm actually in this photo, by the way, but slightly to the left of Jackie, uh, slightly to the left of Kylie and just out of range. But let's face it, there can only be so many important people in one photo <laughs> before it starts losing its impact. <laughs> now, I shared this photo with you before, and while it may appear to be taken in the early 1900s with a stark resemblance to Florence Nightingale, in fact, it was taken in 1985. You can tell because Florence didn't wear a wristwatch. I am also slightly more rotund than Florence, whose life I'm sure was more of a challenge than mine. When I asked a young wardsman who he thought I was in this photo, he thought for a while and then he said, Old Mother Hubbard. <laughs> Some things don't change, or perhaps it was, in fact, time for a change. Anyway, I did change and I moved out of nursing in 1985 and I bought a delicatessen. I did this for about four years, and it required a great deal of change to make the transition from a somewhat successful nursing career to that of a delicatessen owner. What I learned throughout that experience about the difficulties of making change happen is that generally people are creatures of habit. They resist adopting new mindsets, practices and behaviours, and many revert back to their own ways. Customers ordered the same sandwich every day of every week. They came in for lunch at exactly the same time and they expected to pay exactly the same amount despite the fact that the fillings got larger and inflation continued to rise. And if we tried to introduce change, they would choose to go somewhere else. Needless to say, if they did, I chased them down the street, urging them to come back and all was forgiven. 
a carrot or two as part of the change management process is not always a bad thing. So a good lesson learned while working in private enterprise was this. Change must involve the people. Change must not be imposed upon the people. Empower change. You try doing this by creating innovative sandwich fillings and developing a leadership team within your customer group. So in the end, it was easier to sell the delicatessen and return back to nursing, which I did. I did spend a small amount of time on council with the New South Wales Nurses Association in the early 1990s. That's me in the high vis gear with my back to the camera. You did that in those days for fear of disenfranchising your employer if you got yourself on television. That time on council taught me a great deal about managing change and the importance of trust and the process of change as well as employees' trust in management. At that time, of course, fair to say, there wasn't any. And this is where I am today in moving from point A to point B. I'm now in Canberra. I think I work in the only place where the car park is architecturally more appealing than the hospital itself. <laughs> and just to show you that change is not always a good thing, I've come up with a couple of examples here that demonstrate that to a point. There's an old bubbler um, that I used to drink out of when I was at school, and this is now how we drink water you can see the impact necessarily of change is not so good when you think about the, uh, the effect of bottled water on the environment. Nappies used to dry on a clothesline in the sun and now, of course, they are disposable and it takes something between 200 to 500 years to break a disposable nappy down uh, as landfill. So change is not always necessarily a good thing. So on that note, I'll leave you with the message that change can happen. It requires a plan, like the Trappist monk planned his approach. It requires skill, like Cherry Ames and Nurse Jackie. It necessitates determining point A, where you've been, and point B, where you want to go to. And it must involve teamwork. It's teamwork that will realise change and I hope you take advantage of this conference venue to put these change management practices to good use. Thank you.